Welcome to Alameda County's training video on volunteering. Volunteers are important. In a large-scale emergency, it is the volunteers who make the difference in how quickly the community can respond and recover. Major emergencies can overwhelm the capabilities of first responders, particularly during the first 12 to 72 hours, and volunteers can save the day. The Alameda County Public Health Department works with individual volunteers and volunteer groups to respond to city and county public health emergencies. Disaster preparedness depends on having an effective volunteer system. You can make the difference. We need individuals with varying skills, abilities, and knowledge trained and available to respond in the event of an emergency. First are the medical volunteers. Practicing, retired, or otherwise employed medical professionals are critical in dispensing medications and performing medical services. Medical volunteers may include doctors, nurses, emergency medical technicians, pharmacists, nurses assistants, and others with medical training. The larger and more diverse group of volunteers who can often make an even bigger difference are community members with non-medical skills who can assist with organization and enable all manner of essential functions. Our goal is to encourage you to register as a volunteer and to participate in health emergency training, drills, and events before an emergency arises. Benefits of volunteering. For many people, making a difference and helping save lives is enough reward to motivate them to volunteer. But there are many other good reasons to volunteer and train ahead of time. Volunteer training is free, but very valuable. It can provide skills that not only make you more capable in emergencies, but can enhance your resume. Volunteers and their families receive priority treatment and medication if needed in emergencies. Registered volunteers are also insured under the Disaster Service Worker Volunteer Program during emergencies and training. Once you're registered and cleared to operate as a disaster service worker, you're able to work in emergencies all over the state. In many emergencies, unregistered volunteers will be turned away. And perhaps best of all, as a volunteer, you'll be working with a diverse group of people from your community. You can develop lasting personal and professional relationships and you'll be providing a significant contribution. Through your volunteerism, the community will gain access to a broader range of expertise and experience than provided by any agency. Your participation guarantees a connection to the community and local knowledge. And your work supplies essential manpower to support limited emergency responder resources. Your impact can be enormous, and it's easy to start. How to Volunteer During a disaster, emergency responders work with two kinds of volunteers, pre-trained and convergent. Convergent volunteers are people who do not have disaster training, but still want to assist during an emergency. They're very important in large emergencies, but require more management. We'll discuss them in a moment, but preference is given to pre-trained volunteers. The best volunteers are pre-trained because prior to an emergency, they're already registered and experienced at working on the disaster team. Pre-trained volunteers are often trained specifically to fill critical roles. Some of them already have advanced training, like police and search and rescue veterans community emergency response teams, the American Red Cross, amateur radio operators, and the Medical Reserve Corps. But anyone can become a pre-trained volunteer. All you have to do is contact the county or state or one of the emergency volunteer organizations and offer your service. A good place to start is the California Volunteers Disaster Corps. The state of California created the California Volunteers Disaster Corps 
to professionalize, standardize, and coordinate trained disaster volunteers to make it easier for them to serve in their home cities and also in other jurisdictions. Disaster Corps volunteers receive Department of Justice and FBI background checks along with CPR and first aid training. In 2010, California launched an additional service, the Disaster Volunteer Resource Inventory, or DVRI, in five California counties, San Diego, Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, and San Francisco. Soon, this system is meant to go statewide. The DVRI is a free tool designed to be a one-stop portal to help responding agencies coordinate public, private, and nonprofit volunteer programs. DVRI maintains individual contact information, training history, deployment history, availability, credentialing information, language skills, and other pertinent information. Separate from the DVRI is the California Disaster Healthcare Volunteers, or DHV, program, which provides a registry of volunteer health and medical professionals. Medical and healthcare professionals can easily register on the Disaster Healthcare Volunteers website. You'll be asked to submit your license information, contact information, and background information. During a disaster, the DHV system will be accessed by state and local emergency operations centers. This is a secure program. Volunteer information is only accessible to authorized system managers. In addition to these State of California programs, there are other volunteer programs offering additional support and training. The FEMA-sponsored Citizen Corps offers some of the best local training through the Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT, program. You can find information through the Citizen Corps website, or contact your city or county and ask about CERT training. If you'd prefer to go through a volunteer organization, you might consider the NVOAD, National Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. Most volunteer organizations have registered nonprofit status and belong to the NVOAD. The American Red Cross and many church-related agencies, such as the Salvation Army, Mennonite Disaster Services, or the Southern Baptist Disaster Relief, are part of the NVOAD. In addition to NVOADs, there are many other non-governmental organizations whose mission is not specifically disaster related, but that can be an important source of volunteer services in an emergency. The VFW, the Elks Club, and Meals on Wheels all fall into this category. Any of these organizations can provide training and registration prior to an emergency. But if you're not pre-trained and registered, you can still participate as a convergent volunteer. As mentioned earlier, convergent volunteers are not pre-trained and are so named because they converge on an emergency to spontaneously volunteer. Identifying the need for convergent volunteers is critical. By definition, they're not pre-registered. So in order to meet state requirements and provide them with insurance protection, you must register them as soon as possible. Your local emergency planning should include provisions for organizing and registering convergent volunteers. For more information about state guidelines for disaster service workers swearing in and registering, see the DSW video in this series. Of course, not all emergencies benefit from convergent volunteers. Identifying your needs and having a plan will help you assess the role of convergent volunteers during a specific disaster response. For some emergencies, you already have enough staff, and sometimes more training is required than you have time for. In these cases, convergent volunteers either need to be immediately registered or thanked and sent away to safety. Volunteer Management Volunteers are often the first individuals on the scene during a disaster. 
Care should be taken when authorities arrive to make sure that any volunteers who remain are sworn and registered. Unregistered volunteers are not eligible for insurance coverage. Incident management will follow the incident command system. Pre-trained volunteers should know this structure. The volunteer manager should make the mission and roles of volunteers clear. Tell volunteers how their work impacts others. Be transparent about decisions and make sure volunteers are kept at the forefront of knowledge during an event. If the volunteers are unknown, evaluate and assign them as best you can according to their skills and experience. But make sure to allow for feedback from volunteers who may have expertise and observations beyond their assigned roles. And don't be afraid to reassign volunteers, especially when you learn of skills that may help in problem solving. Volunteer Recruiting Your local emergency plan should include a recruitment strategy for volunteers before an incident occurs. Before requesting volunteer assistance, you should identify your needs and the number of individuals critical to carrying out your emergency preparedness plan. Make any time commitment and travel requirements known. Only recruit volunteers for meaningful and purposeful assignments. Keep in mind when people see a pressing need and the potential for them to make a difference, they'll often step forward and volunteer to help. Your role is to effectively communicate how they can make a difference and what your needs are. Help volunteers know what to expect before being deployed. They may be assigned a role or function within a mass clinic, hospital, acute care setting, public health operation, or neighborhood help center. A volunteer will usually continue to serve if they feel they've been equipped to complete the task at hand and their contributions are valuable. A good volunteer program should provide thorough training, have adequate supervision, set up reasonable shifts, assign roles based on experience, training, and skill levels, provide breaks, have snacks and water available, and recruit enough volunteers so that individuals are not overburdened. A good program will also retain many of its volunteers. People stay where they're made to feel comfortable and needed. So it's a good idea to learn names and call volunteers by their names. And the best place to make this happen is training. Volunteer training. Pre-training and registering remains the best way to be a great volunteer. A well-trained volunteer is better equipped and more capable during a crisis. Training in the moment of an emergency is possible. However, it's not the most effective way to prepare. Just-in-time training, as it's called, is best used as a refresher or a supplement for pre-trained volunteers. Learning everything just in time is very difficult. For the benefit of self, family, and community, Individuals are encouraged to volunteer for emergency training and drills long before any events. To find out about current training opportunities, volunteers can contact the Alameda County Public Health Department. Ask for the Hospital Preparedness Program Volunteer Coordinator. Online courses are also available in ICS, triage, disaster life support, psychological first aid, and various other topics. The CERT program is a good example. To become a CERT member, volunteers must attend the CERT training course offered once every quarter, and then meet the program participation requirements by joining in CERT projects at least two times within a two-year period. The CERT identification card is good for two years and will be reissued automatically if you continue to participate with the organization. Volunteering Review Volunteers are an important part of any disaster response. So you must remember, an informed volunteer translates into an educated, 
equipped, empowered, and effective volunteer. Every emergency preparedness plan should account for assimilating volunteers into an emergency disaster response. Three points to stress with volunteers are, you can make a difference. Training makes you more capable in emergencies and pre-registering as a disaster volunteer provides benefits to yourself, your family, and your community. An effective volunteer management system will identify, recruit, train, and manage disaster volunteers. Before requesting volunteer assistance, you should identify your needs and the number of individuals critical to carrying out your emergency preparedness plan. Make sure those who serve have appropriate licenses, certificates, and background checks. Make provisions for organizing and registering convergent volunteers. Inform volunteers of your agency and their role or function during an emergency. Involve volunteers in disaster planning and preparedness activities helping them to understand and be able to take into account vulnerabilities and capabilities within their community. Alameda County thanks every individual who serves as a volunteer during public health training and responses. We hope this information will help you better serve and protect your community. This pod video training series is brought to you by the Alameda County Public Health Department Office of Public Health Emergency Preparedness, in collaboration with Applied Creative Training, Inc.